Another day, another story. In 1859 a massive solar flare spewed electrified gas and subatomic particles toward Earth, wreaking havoc on telegraph networks. On the morning of September 1, 1859, amateur astronomer Richard Carrington ascended into the private observatory attached to his country estate outside of London. Welcome to Tabot Eminent Channel. After cranking open the dome's shutter to reveal the clear blue sky, he pointed his brass telescope toward the sun and began to sketch a cluster of enormous dark spots that freckled its surface. Suddenly, Carrington spotted what he described as, two patches of intensely bright and white light, erupting from the sunspots. Five minutes later the fireballs vanished, but within hours their impact would be felt across the globe. That night, telegraph communications around the world began to fail, there were reports of sparks showering from telegraph machines, shocking operators and setting papers ablaze. All over the planet, colorful auroras illuminated the nighttime skies, glowing so brightly that birds began to chirp and laborers started their daily chores, believing the sun had begun rising. Some thought the end of the world was at hand, but Carrington's naked eyes had spotted the true cause for the bizarre happenings, a massive solar flare with the energy of 10 billion atomic bombs. The flare spewed electrified gas and subatomic particles toward Earth, and the resulting geomagnetic storm, dubbed the Carrington Event, was the largest on record to have struck the planet. The Carrington Event, also known as the Solar Superstorm of 1859, was a significant space weather event that occurred in September 1859. It is named after the British astronomer Richard Carrington, who observed and documented the event. This solar storm is considered one of the most powerful in recorded history and had several notable effects on Earth. Key aspects of the Carrington event include Solar flares The event began with a massive solar flare on September 1, 1859. Richard Carrington, while observing the sun through his telescope, noticed a sudden burst of white light, which he later described as two brilliant points of light, solar flares, on the solar surface. These flares were associated with intense bursts of energy. Coronal mass ejection, CME, following the solar flares, a massive coronal mass ejection occurred. A CME is a massive expulsion of solar plasma and magnetic fields from the sun's corona. In the case of the Carrington event, this CME was particularly powerful and aimed directly at Earth. Auroras the most visible and famous effect of the Carrington event was the dramatic increase in auroral activity, especially at lower latitudes than usual. Auroras, also known as the northern and southern lights, are typically seen near the Earth's polar regions. However, during the Carrington event, they were observed as far south as the Caribbean, Central America, and even Hawaii. Telegraph System Disruptions the telegraph systems in operation at the time were severely affected by the geomagnetic storm caused by the CME. Telegraph operators reported electric shocks, sparks, and even fires in their offices. In some cases, telegraph systems continued to work even after being disconnected from their power sources due to the induced currents from the storm. Impact on navigation The event caused compasses to malfunction, affecting navigation for a brief period. Ships at sea that relied on compasses for direction reported difficulties during the storm. Modern implications. If a similar event were to occur today, with our much more technologically dependent society, the impact could be far more significant. Modern infrastructure such as power grids, satellites, and communication systems are vulnerable to the effects of a powerful solar storm. Scientists and policymakers are keenly aware of the potential risks posed by such events and have taken steps to prepare for them. The Carrington event remains a valuable historical example of the potential impacts of severe space weather events on our technology-dependent society. While such events are relatively rare, they serve as a reminder of the importance of space weather monitoring and preparedness to mitigate potential future impacts. Researchers and organizations around the world continue to study solar activity and develop strategies to protect critical infrastructure from space weather-related disruptions. Bright flare, dark lines. Compared to today's information superhighway, the telegraph system in 1859 may have been a mere dirt road, but the Victorian Internet was also a critical means of transmitting news, sending private messages and engaging in commerce. 
Telegraph operators in the United States had observed local interruptions due to thunderstorms and northern lights before, but they never experienced a global disturbance like the one-two punch they received in the waning days of summer in 1859. Many telegraph lines across North America were rendered inoperable on the night of August 28 as the first of two successive solar storms struck. E. W. Colgan, a telegraph manager in Pittsburgh, reported that the resulting currents flowing through the wires were so powerful that platinum contacts were in danger of melting and streams of fire were pouring forth from the circuits. In Washington, D.C., telegraph operator Frederick W. Royce was severely shocked as his forehead grazed a ground wire. According to a witness, an arc of fire jumped from Royce's head to the telegraphic equipment. Some telegraph stations that used chemicals to mark sheets reported that powerful surges caused telegraph paper to combust. On the morning of September 2, the magnetic mayhem resulting from the second storm created even more chaos for telegraph operators. When American Telegraph Company employees arrived at their Boston office at 8 a.m., they discovered it was impossible to transmit or receive dispatches. The atmosphere was so charged, however, that operators made an incredible discovery. They could unplug their batteries and still transmit messages to Portland, Maine, at 30 to 90 second intervals using only the auroral current. Messages still couldn't be sent as seamlessly as under normal conditions, but it was a useful workaround. By 10 a.m. the magnetic disturbance abated enough that stations reconnected their batteries, but transmissions were still affected for the rest of the morning. Sky on fire. When telegraphs did come back online, many were filled with vivid accounts of the celestial light show that had been witnessed the night before. Newspapers from France to Australia featured glowing descriptions of brilliant auroras that had turned night into day. One eyewitness account from a woman on Sullivan's Island in South Carolina ran in the Charleston Mercury. The eastern sky appeared of a blood-red color. It seemed brightest exactly in the east, as though the full moon, or rather the sun, were about to rise. It extended almost to the zenith. The whole island was illuminated. The sea reflected the phenomenon, and no one could look at it without thinking of the passage in the Bible which says, the sea was turned to blood. The shells on the beach, reflecting light, resembled coals of fire. The sky was so crimson that many who saw it believed that neighboring locales were on fire. Americans in the south were particularly startled by the northern lights, which migrated so close to the equator that they were seen in Cuba and Jamaica. Elsewhere, however, there appeared to be genuine confusion. In Abbeville, South Carolina, Masons awoke and began to lay bricks at their job site until they realized the hour and returned to bed. In Bealton, Virginia, larks were stirred from their sleep at 1 a.m. and began to warble. Unfortunately for them, a conductor on the Orange and Alexandria Railroad was also awake and shot three of them dead. In cities across America, people stood in the streets and gazed up at the heavenly pyrotechnics. In Boston, some even caught up on their reading, taking advantage of the celestial fire to peruse the local newspapers. Ice core samples have determined that the Carrington event was twice as big as any other solar storm in the last 500 years. What would be the impact of a similar storm today? According to a 2008 report from the National Academy of Sciences, it could cause extensive social and economic disruptions due to its impact on power grids, satellite communications and GPS systems. The potential price tag? Between $1 trillion and $2 trillion. The unlikely heroes of the Carrington event. In the autumn of 1859, the world was a very different place. The Industrial Revolution was in full swing, and society was becoming increasingly reliant on new technologies. Telegraph lines crisscrossed continents, connecting nations like never before, and enabling rapid communication across vast distances. But on the morning of September 1st, something extraordinary and terrifying happened. Richard Carrington, a British astronomer with an insatiable curiosity for the sun, had been meticulously sketching its surface through his telescope. He was particularly interested in sunspots, those dark blemishes on the sun's fiery surface. Little did he know that on this fateful day, he would witness something unprecedented. As Carrington focused his telescope on a large sunspot group, he saw two brilliant points of light. These were not ordinary sunspots, they were something entirely different. 
Moments later, the points erupted into a blinding flash of white light. Carrington instinctively withdrew his eye from the telescope, but the damage had been done. He had just witnessed the birth of a solar storm, a phenomenon never before observed by humanity. Unbeknownst to Carrington, the massive solar flare he had witnessed was the precursor to a colossal event. The sun unleashed a powerful coronal mass ejection CME, sending a surge of charged particles hurtling toward Earth. These particles, along with intense magnetic disturbances, were about to wreak havoc on the planet's nascent telegraph systems. Across the United States and Europe, telegraph operators reported bizarre and inexplicable phenomena. Electric shocks coursed through the wires, and sparks flew from their equipment. Some operators even found their telegraph paper spontaneously catching fire. Chaos reigned in the telegraph offices as operators struggled to make sense of the madness unfolding before their eyes. But amidst the chaos, a few telegraph operators displayed remarkable ingenuity and resourcefulness. In Washington, D.C., Samuel Morse, the inventor of the Morse code and telegraph system, received reports of the disturbances. He quickly deduced that the anomalies were caused by the solar storm and realized the severity of the situation. Morse sent out a series of emergency messages to telegraph operators across the affected regions. He instructed them to disconnect their equipment from their power sources and use their batteries instead. By doing this, they could prevent further damage to their telegraph systems and potentially save lives. The quick thinking of Samuel Morse and other telegraph operators helped limit the extent of the damage caused by the Carrington event. While many telegraph lines were temporarily disabled, they were eventually restored as the solar storm subsided. Society had narrowly escaped a technological catastrophe, thanks to the unlikely heroes of the telegraph offices. The Carrington event served as a wake-up call for humanity, highlighting the vulnerability of our technology to space weather events. It also underscored the importance of scientific curiosity, innovation, and cooperation in the face of unexpected challenges. Today, the legacy of those early telegraph operators lives on, a testament to the power of human ingenuity in the face of nature's fury. Thanks for watching. Request you to subscribe the channel.